<laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, peoples. How are you today? BFM 89.9. Good morning. I'm Melissa Idris. Welcome to the morning headlines. It is Friday, the um, 10th of January, and I'm sitting in for Shirad Kutin today. Lots of stories on foreign workers and illegal immigrants lately. I think that's because the Home Ministry is going to launch this major crackdown on illegal immigrants in the country that's starting January 21st. The Star carries it on their front pages. Brace for another roundup, it says. So, employers with illegal workers, um, you are going to have to rush to register your workers. Um, plantation, manufacturing, construction, I think, could possibly take a hit. But you still have some time because um, the ever merciful Home Ministry has granted a grace period um, to make things right and register your workers. But, you know, it's 10 days to go, so employers with undocumented workers, let's get cracking. Which leads me to my next story, which is on the sun. Um, iCard for foreign workers. You've got to carry an iCard now. Uh, it's going to be 110 ringgit and it will carry all your personal info digitally, so you don't have to carry your passport. There's also, they're going to use the biometric fingerprint um, so that all illegal workers before those that get deported will have their information into the system and then they can't come back under a different name. But you've got to carry your iCard. Most interesting headline for me today is on the Malay Mail. It's um, quite emotive. Filth neglect at hospitals spark uproar. Now, I saw this headline, didn't know what the story was about, but I was outraged anyway because I was looking at all the pictures, so good use of photography. The story is that um, a number of Selangor hospitals have been drowning in trash. Um, this is a place where sick people are supposed to get better, but it's got, you see the trash cans and the garbage everywhere. So ReadyCare is the company that's in charge of providing um, hospital management to eight hospitals for the um, health ministry. And they have not held up their end of the bargain because they switched contractors. I think it's from Harta Maintenance to uh, Alam Berse. So apparently there are not enough workers now and the hospitals are just swimming in filth and neglect. And you know, it's like, this is a place where people are trying to get better. What happens if it's one of your family members in the hospital ready care? How would you feel having dirty toilets and germs everywhere? And the part that kills me is that it has happened before. See what I mean? It's happened before. So I think back in um, 2011, for two months, the waste wasn't collected at um, 48 hospitals in the Klang Valley. 48 hospitals for two months had waste just lying around. We're talking about bags and bags of clinical waste with amputated limbs, body parts, um, placentas, used syringes, you know, bloody towels everywhere. It's just lying around the garbage area. Think about what that means. Ready care? What? is going on. Get your act together. Um, that's what the health ministry is saying. Apparently they are going to get their act together, but you know, damage is done. Uh, so Slango State Government is saying, let's take a look at the contracts. Apparently the contracts are worth some 200 million ringgit a year. Now all the papers have moved away from the Jais story. Utusan is still carrying on with this theme. Ma'is pertahankan Jais. So uh, the Slango Islamic Affairs Council, that's Ma'is, they've come up to defend their enforcement agency, which is Jais, over the raid and the Bible seizure. They say it's all compliant, it's all in order, it follows the law. And um, a few other things, the president and chair of Ma'is says that Jais has the authority similar to that of the police when conducting raids and searches of places of worship. Ooh, that scares me a little bit. I can't tell you why, but it does. Um, anyway. Jais now doesn't also have to, well, my says Jais doesn't have to tell anyone about raids because they say they have no obligation to inform anyone when they're trying to raid a place because it may hamper the investigation process. I think that's the point. I think that's the point of informing someone so that it could hamper something like that. Anyway, um, the other interesting bit is that my says 
say no evil because there are 34 words in um, this enactment, according to section 9 of this enactment that gives Jais its power, that non-Muslims cannot say under any circumstance and Allah being one of them. So it's, it's interesting. Some of the words here on this list I have is quite interesting. Uh, you've got Sharia, one of them, um, Haji as well, Sheikh, Imam, Nabi, and a whole list of that. Uh, you can check it out on the website. But how would that be put into practice? Don't we have lots of Tuan Hajis that need to be announced when they come for important meetings? And, um, you know, Sharia law and Sharia compliance and all that stuff that needs to be said out loud. I see a business opportunity here. So, you know, we could get an app that has all these words said by the most religious person ever and then we could just play it whenever we need people to say it, right? So if you know any app developers out there, give me a call, we can, you know, work something out. And I'm going to end with this. I have a bone to pick with NST. This is their front cover today. Major real estate space given to photos of this boring machine. Not boring, but boring. Uh, machine on the front page. Story about the Langat 2 still on. But this is what got my goat this morning. Look at this. This is the um, few headlines in, on the front page of NST today. We'll start with this one. Operation to smoke out illegal workers. Illegal foreign workers. What is that? Smoke out illegal foreign workers? What are they? Vermin? Come on, NST. Choice of words, really. Um, next page, on next one, on page 7, is top tips on how to deal with the rising cost of living. It's like we've just given up. It's like we say, okay, just keep increasing. I'm just going to read the tips on NST and see how I can deal with the fact that everything's more expensive nowadays. Okay, cool. And finally, my best one yet. Driving in KL is a breeze, says motorists. It's a breeze. It's a breeze. I'm going to end on that note. It is Friday, so I'll be off for the weekend. I hope you will have a pleasant weekend. Come back and join me on Monday. I will see you then. I'm Melissa Idris for BFM 89.9.